rainy Sunday around Middle Tennessee earlier today. Here's meteorologist Davis Nolan, and the question, of course, is will we see much of the same later this week? Well, there are going to be some changes this week. There will be dry changes. Now, today, you had a storm. You got one or two inches of rain in a short period of time. If you didn't get one, you were just staying out in the steamy sunshine, and there wasn't a lot. There weren't a lot of them. Let me show you a time lapse of the storms today, and you can see how small they were. But where they were, they dumped a lot of rain. Places like DeKalb, Smith County, uh, eastern uh, parts of Wilson County, and watch right over the Opryland area. This storm, this the storms that builds in during the early evening heat. Watch that one right there. Now, it made quite a view. This picture was taken from Percy Priest Lake. Looks like an atomic bomb going off in the distance, doesn't it? That's the storm over Opryland taken by Glenda Foster while she was on a boat on the lake. And that's just the rain chef who was dumping all that heavy rain onto Briley Parkway into the Opryland area. That's what they look like off in the distance. It's a muggy 81 degrees right now in Nashville. Some low 70s to our east. Some patchy fog will develop in some of those areas. Overnight tonight, partly cloudy. Can't rule out a shower, but most of them have died out now. And already 89 at 11 o'clock. We'll break out some more hit or miss storms tomorrow, but the chances are going to increase. And as the front stalls out this week, we're going to see higher than normal rain chances, but it might mean lower temperatures. I'll break it all down for you. Coming up. Thanks, Davis. Well, some better news for Nashville hospitals tonight as they deal with a large number of COVID-19 patients. 16% of hospital beds and 13% of ICU beds are now available. That's 1% higher than the numbers we just saw yesterday. But those numbers are still under the city's goal of 20% availability. There have now been more than 16 million confirmed cases around the world. And Andrew Dimbert has more on how FEMA is issuing a call for medical reinforcements in five states. As the number of coronavirus cases continues to rise across much of the country, FEMA reporting that five states, Arizona, California, Florida, Louisiana, and Texas, are in need of skilled medical professionals. The devastating toll in the U.S. now surpassing 146,000, more than 1,000 COVID fatalities a day for the past five days. In Florida, nearly 8,000 children under the age of 17 testing positive for the virus in the past week. Nine-year-old Kamora Linham, the state's youngest COVID tragedy, her family says she had no underlying health conditions. Until we have it under control, we cannot afford to put our kids in school because we will have many more deaths. Officials in the Sunshine State now looking for ways to reopen bars and restaurants, something that has some health experts concerned. Reopening a bar in this environment is uh, really irresponsible. If they open up bars now, they're basically saying goodbye to schools for all of the fall. Florida surpassing New York, now second behind only California in number of COVID-19 cases. Our objective is to kill this virus. A shelter in place, as difficult as it will be, it is the medicine we need to take. 15 states reporting problems with testing, some people waiting up to 19 days for results. In August, we'll have 50 million tests available. Everyone who needs a test, we're prioritizing that and they will get it. With millions of Americans out of work, many are relying on the $600 a week federal pandemic unemployment compensation, a benefit set to expire this week. The original unemployment benefits actually paid people to stay home. That's not true, you know? There are people that would gladly work, but that, that the $200, that $187 does not cover rent. It doesn't help us eat. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New Jersey. Well, while school will look differently for students in Middle Tennessee, they are still going to need plenty of materials to be successful. That's why the Hispanic Family Foundation stocked students up with all the necessities they need during a school supply drive through this morning. From pencils to notebooks and backpacks, the foundation wanted to get students excited about the new year, even if it is starting online. Organizers say it's been financially tough during COVID-19 for families with multiple students, so they wanted to help ease that burden. Sometimes it, uh, people doesn't understand how helpful it is for the Latinos to have this material because then they know they don't have to, to think about, you know, paying for all these materials if they have four or five kids at home. So this will be so helpful for them. And today's drive also gave out books to each student and 20 pound boxes of food for every family. Well, happening tomorrow, the Metro Nashville Education Association.